Part 1 You will hear a conversation between two students. One of them is explaining to the other how to use the university library. First, you will have 20 seconds to look at questions 1 to 4. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Excuse me, Lily. Could you help me? You know we've got an essay to write about eating customs across the world. Yeah, we have to borrow some books, don't we? Yes, but I missed the library training. Do you think you could show me how to find the books and how to take them out? Sure, no problem. Shall I tell you about the different parts of the library first? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. OK, then. Let's look at the plan of the library. Here, you can see the main door on the north side that leads into the lobby. In the middle of the building, there's a big open PC zone. The lift and stairs are on the left as you go in, and on the other side of the building, there's the library cafe. That part of the library is pretty sociable. It's a good place to study with friends. I really prefer to study alone. Is there anywhere in the library I can go? Oh, if you like studying in a quiet place, it's better to go upstairs to the silent zone. As you come out of the lift or up the stairs, you'll see a section on your right facing north which is closed off. That's the silent zone. On the other side, facing south, are the bookshelves with all the cookbooks and... Before you hear the next part of the conversation, you will have to look at questions 5 to 10. Listen carefully and answer questions 5, 10. Now, can you show me how to find a book? Well, the library is very big and the books on food could be under cookery or they could be in history or even entertainment. So the first thing to do is to look it up in the online catalogue. Where do I do that? It's easy. There are lots of computers in the library for that. OK, I see. Right, you look up the title first. When you found the book, you'll see it has a class mark next to it. The class mark is one or two letters and a number. Make a note of the class mark. Then look it up on the plan of the library. The plan shows you exactly what section of the library the books are actually kept in. Thank you very much, Lily. So how do I borrow a book? That's simple too. When you go to the library, you'll have to take your student ID card. When you want to borrow a book, you take it downstairs to the scanner. Then, scan your ID card first. Next, open the book and slide it under the scanner until it makes a sound, a short beep. And that's all you have to do. Oh, sorry, I forgot. At the end, the system prints out a ticket. It's a good idea to keep it for a while, just in case you have a problem with your loan. Thanks again, Lily. You've been really kind. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a library assistant talking about the library she works in. You now have thirty seconds to read questions eleven to fifteen. Hi, can I help you? Um, yes, I wanted to join the library. Okay. First of all, let me show you round the library and explain a few things for you. Okay. Now we're here at the main entrance. You can see the reception, which is where you bring back and take out books, and also we can order books and answer your questions there. Uh、mm、huh. -hmm. Next to the reception, where you can see those old desks, is where we keep the magazines because you can sit down and read there. They're divided into sections for sciences, geography, arts, etc.、Uh, then, at the back of the library, you can see the section for old books. Next to that is where the books proper start. That used to be the science section. But now on those shelves, you'll find the art section. We had a big reorganisation in the summer, which I think has made it clearer.、Oh. <laughs> the numbering is standard, so you should be able to find what you want quite easily. However, if you can't find something, it probably means it's been borrowed. Okay, then in the corner next to the reference section. Is where we thought it was quietest, and away from the phones and printers and things. So we've put the study desks there. They all have computer access if you need it for your laptop. No.、Oh. We do ask that you don't just read magazines there, though. Okay.、Uh, then there's the reference section, where you can look up the files. Then, as we come back to the main entrance. Is the next section where we used to have the languages? It got very busy and noisy, so when we moved everything round, we decided to put the law books here. Also, because it's a smaller section, it fits quite well here.、Ah. Okay, then we're back at the main entrance. Over there, by reception, there's a door that goes to the extension. And we have further sections, such as languages and study desks, through there. So you could have a look round when we've finished. Then, just between reception and the door here, is where we decided to put the computers. But the computer magazines are in the magazine section, as we found too many went missing here.、Oh. <laughs> okay, is that everything? You now have thirty seconds to read questions sixteen to twenty. That's great, thanks. Can you just tell me a bit about borrowing and the rules and whatever? Of course. Over the last two months, we've been introducing a new system for this, and you can now take books out for six weeks. That's generally enough for most people. We usually get books back within thirty days. Of course, you may decide to renew the period. You used to have to come in to get the book stamped, because we don't like doing it over the phone, as there's no record of it. But now you can do all that via email. Oh. 
If you do forget to renew, then we do make a charge, I'm afraid. That helps our costs, of course, but we do insist on it. The good news is that there is only one charge. I know some libraries charge one pound for one week and then it goes up with each week it's late. We ask for one pound fifty, as we think that's high enough to stop people being overdue. <laughs> the other thing you may want to know is what you do about books that are not on the shelves. We do have a system for reserving them. All you have to do is fill in a yellow form behind those blue ones on the desk mm -hmm. and give it to someone at reception. We'll let you know when it comes in. Also, sometimes you will need a journal article that we don't have but can get from other libraries. So we offer an ordering service if you need it. Now, if you'd like to fill in this form here... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear someone talking to a group of university students. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 21 to 27. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Upton University. I hope you are settling in and beginning to find your way around. I know how confusing it can be when you start life at university, and that's why we have Freshers' Week to help you find your feet. Before I go any further, I should perhaps introduce myself. My name is Sally Jackson, and I am the Secretary of the Students' Union, which has organized this week of events for you. You will usually find me in the office on the first floor of this building when I'm not attending lectures. Anyway, down to business. Of course, there are a few things that you are obliged to get done during your first week here, but once you've opened a bank account, if you haven't got one already, senior director of studies to discuss which courses you are going to take and signed up with a doctor, there will be plenty of time left to enjoy the events we have arranged for the week. And have we got a lot lined up for you. Throughout the week from Monday to Friday, Every morning, starting at 10 a.m., there will be orientation and welfare events. These will include tours of the campus, which, as you have probably noticed, is the size of a small town with 9,000 residential students, as well as sessions on developing study skills. We also have tours of Upton itself arranged for you, with a bus leaving from outside this building every afternoon at 5 o'clock. There are a number of interesting things to do and see in and around Upton, so you can expect visits to the castle and museum, as well as the popular Ghost Walk. You'll need to sign up for this one, as numbers are limited. Just put your name on the list on the notice board in the entrance lobby. An important event is scheduled for Monday, that's the day after tomorrow, when we will be holding the academic fair. This is an opportunity for you to speak to students and academic staff about the courses that are on offer. The academic fair starts at 1 o'clock, by the way. 
There are a couple of other fairs that I think will interest you. First of all, we have the Society's Fair on Tuesday the 16th, which I think is an absolute must. You might not believe it, but the university has over 150 societies and sports clubs you can sign up for, so you are sure to find something of interest to you. That also starts at 1 o'clock, and it will be here in the Union Building. Also in this building is the Trade Fair on Wednesday from 2 until 5 in the afternoon. This one might sound a bit strange because you will find a load of banks and other businesses here trying to get your custom. You will find plenty of bargains and, best of all, a lot of the businesses give away stuff for free. You now have 15 seconds to read questions 28 to 30. We've also got a great entertainment program lined up for you, starting tonight with our welcoming party. We have a top band lined up for your entertainment, but I'm not allowed to say who they are. All I can say is that I am sure you will not be disappointed. So come along to Blackmore Hall at 9 o'clock this evening to get your university experience off to a flying start. Just one point. I'm afraid this event is limited to freshers only. Because of space restrictions, you can't bring a friend tonight. Sorry about that. There's more fun and games on Monday in the Cotswold Theater here on campus. We have booked two of the cleverest comedians in the country, Paul Frazier and Jenny Brown, for a three-hour show. Paul has assured us that he and Jenny have packed the show with new material, and as they always get rave reviews for their shows, I think we can look forward to an evening of great entertainment. That's in the Cotswold Theater on Monday evening at 7.30. Moving along a bit, on Thursday there is an important date for your diaries. This is the official Freshers' opening ceremony, when the Dean welcomes you to Upton University. So remember, Thursday the 18th from 2.30 to 3.30 in Blackmore Hall. You certainly should go to this one, and by the way, light refreshments will be available. At the end of the week, on Saturday, you have the chance to dress up in your smartest evening wear for the official Freshers' Ball. Actually, although it's called a ball, it is quite a relaxed affair, so we are more than happy if you turn up wearing jeans and a t-shirt. The important thing is to relax and enjoy yourselves. Time and place are the same as for this evening's party. Blackmore Hall from 9 in the evening to 3 o'clock in the morning. Right. I think I've covered the most important and exciting events we have lined up for you, but there will be plenty of other things going on throughout the week, so remember to check the notice board in the entrance lobby regularly. Enjoy the rest of the day, and I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible this evening at the welcoming party. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. Now listen to the second part of the lecture.
As you listen, complete the notes below. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Now let's turn to shopping, which may interest you more. In general, shops open at 9 o'clock in the morning and close at 5.30 in the afternoon. In country towns and quieter suburbs, smaller shops close for an hour at lunchtime, and once a week there tends to be an early closing day when most shops shut during the afternoon. Many cities have a late night once a week when shops stay open until approximately 8 o'clock in the evening. You should ensure that anything you bring into the country, such as travelling irons, heated rollers, hair dryers and electric shavers, can be used on the standard British voltage, which is 240 volts, 58Z. Many hotels will, on request, be able to supply adapters for electric shavers. When you travel, you may want to send postcards home. Stamps can be bought at post offices throughout Britain. They are open from 9 o'clock to 5.30, Monday to Friday, and until 12.30 on Saturday. Stamps can also be bought at postal centre stamp dispensers, at large stores and major tourist attractions. For posting letters, you don't have to go far before finding a red painted letterbox. Alternatively, use the letterboxes at post offices. You may ask how much to tip in hotels and how much it is for a taxi. There are no fixed rules on tariffs about this and the following is intended only as a guide to customary practice. Most hotel bills include a service charge, usually 10 to 12%, but in some larger hotels, 15%. Where a service charge is not included, it is customary to divide 10 to 15% of the bill among the staff who have given good service. In restaurants, if a service charge is not included in the bill, then 10 to 15% is usually left for the waiter. For porters, we usually give 30p to 50p per suitcase. For taxis, 10 to 15% of the fare. Hairdressers, £2 according to how much work they have done, plus 50p to the assistant who washed your hair. If you drive in Britain, you should remember to drive on the left and overtake on the right. The wearing of seatbelts is compulsory for the driver and front seat passengers. Now let's talk about full details of Britain's road regulations. A copy of the Highway Code can be obtained from offices of the Automobile Association, AA or Royal Automobile Club, RAC, at most ports of entry. These two motoring organisations can also provide plenty of helpful information to all motorists. Contact AA. Telephone is 01 854 7373 24 hour service. RAC telephone is 0304 204 256. 24 hour service. For something more serious, telephone operators will give you the telephone number and address of a local doctor's surgery. Alternatively, you can go to the casualty department of any general hospital or, in the case of severe emergency, dial 999. 999 is free. Remember, unless you belong to a European community country, or one with which the UK has reciprocal health arrangements, you will be charged for the full cost of medical treatment in Britain, except in the case of accidents or emergencies requiring outpatient treatments only. It would therefore be wise to take out full medical insurance before leaving home.
That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.